This little guy right here is Jamal Jackson. He's a pixie frog, also known as an African giant bullfrog. They're called African giant bullfrogs since they happen to be one of the largest species of frog in the entire world. I want to die. Anyways, Jamal Jackson is still a baby, which means he still has a lot of growing to do. And in order for him to grow, he has to <coughs> eat a lot. So in this video, we will be seeing which type of roaches snack Jamal Jackson likes to eat the most. Whatever. I want to die. This is a Simondoa cave cockroach, and it's literally the rarest snack you could give a frog. For starters, this species of roach is completely extinct within the wild. They used to inhabit a particular cave in Guinea, but due to human mining, the only cave that these roaches were ever found in was destroyed. Fortunately, a group of scientists had discovered these roaches before the cave system was destroyed. They had collected a handful of these newly discovered roaches and brought them to their lab to conduct experiments. Once the scientists were done, they went back to the cave where they originally collected collected the roaches from in order to return them. However, they were shocked to discover their habitat had been completely destroyed. And worst of all, there were no more Simondoa cave cockroaches anywhere within that cave. Bruh. Luckily enough, the handful of roaches the scientists collected were able to have babies in captivity, and these babies were able to have babies of their own. Fast forward to today, and these amazing insects still live on. And while they might be extinct in the wild, they have been able to flourish within the care of insect hobbyists all around the world. Now that the homie Jamal Jackson knows everything there is to know about Simondoa cave cockroaches, let's have Simon the Roach meet my pixie frog. Now remember Jamal, there's no shame in letting this one go. Oh my freaking gosh. No hesitation. Absolutely no hesitation. That means it must be bust down Gucci turtle out of 10. Bust down. This next insect is known as the giant cave cockroach, and at above average, huh? I mean 4 inches in size, they're one of the largest cockroaches in the entire world. Interestingly, this roach will deter its predators by emitting a fragrance that smells a lot like black pepper. Daddy, chill. In other words, Mother Nature intended this roach to season itself once it gets scared. Bruh. Now let's just go ahead and see what Jamal thinks of giant peppery roaches. Bruh. 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 As you can clearly see, Jamal Jackson gobbled up that four incher like he was starving. This means that giant cave cockroaches are the munch. They gotta eat it, he ate it for lunch. Next up, we got the crumb cockroach. This species of roach hails from southern Africa and are equipped with these two dark spots on its wings that serve a unique purpose. These spots are meant to resemble the eyes of a larger creature in hopes of deterring any predators that try to eat the crumb cockroach in the wild. Now, I love Jamal Jackson very much. <gasps> But if we're being honest, he's not the brightest frog in the pond. Having said that, let's see if Jamal gets tricked by this classic case of eye mimicry. <laughs> Alrighty, it looks like Jamal may have had a little hiccup from that last meal we gave him, but let's see if we could get him to munch on this little guy. Okay, this roach is being very difficult, so I'm gonna try to get it to move, and uh, okay, dude, that is literally tong. Stop eating the tong, bro, it's metal. It's metal, you can't bite this. Bro, 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 you see that roach right there? Attack the roach, please. Oh my gosh, I'm done with you, dude. I'm gonna kill my frog. Anyways, let's try that again. Okay, at least this time he hit the freaking cockroach. Bruh. As you guys can see, Jamal isn't the slightest bit intimidated by the eyeball mimicry that's taking place on the roach's wings. And if I'm being honest, I can't really tell if it's because Jamal is straight thug life. Hold this L, Bozo Roach. Or if he's just too dumb to understand what's going on. Stupid. Either way, let's just jiggle this roach so that Jamal can taste some delicious crumb cock. Come on, buddy, just eat the roach, just eat it. Oh my gosh, yes, finally. Now, it really looked like he enjoyed that meal, so we'll give it a tasty out of 10. Tasty. This next gourmet meal is known as the ivory cockroach. They begin their life looking like shiny turds, but once these roaches mature out into adults, they develop wings with an absolutely stunning ivory coloration. Okay, but how does that turn into that, and what the hell is that thing? Well, this albino-looking roach is actually a freshly molted ivory roach. Now, molt or molting is the process an insect must go through in order to grow. Since cockroaches don't have any bones or a skeleton, they have something called an exoskeleton. 
skeleton, aka their skeleton is on the outside. As a result of not being able to stretch their solid outer layer or their exoskeleton to grow, they had to adapt an ability that would allow them to literally crawl out of their old skeleton. This process is called molting. Moments after crawling out of their old skin, the roach appears completely white since its old exoskeleton hasn't hardened Bruh. yet. And while the roach is in this vulnerable post-molt stage, it's soft and squishy like a marshmallow. Interestingly, the last molt these roaches will go through will give them those infamous wings and that's how a turd with legs can become this sexy thing. Oh, yeah. Anyways, let's see how Jamal reacts to ivory cockroaches. Okay, Jamal, don't be shy now. I know you want to eat that freaking cockroach. Come on, eat it. Eat the f what? There ain't no way, bruh. There ain't no way the fattest frog in the world just refused a meal. You know what? I'm gonna try one more time to feed this roach to Jamal, since I know from personal experience that these ivory roaches are bussin' bussin'. Redeem yourself, Jamal. Oh my god. Jamal really out here sumo smashing his food rather than eating it? You're done. So I guess ivory cockroaches are a ugh, yuck out of 10. Bruh. Wait, what about this soft and squishy, freshly molted delicacy right here? I mean, it is still technically an ivory cockroach, except it has the texture of a newborn's ear since its exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet. Now, with that in mind, let's see if Jamal turns down this extra rare and savory ivory cockroach like he did the other one. All right, Jamal, this is some high experience stuff right here, so don't make yourself look like a fool. Oh my god. He's out here wearing the roach as a hat, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, please. Please. Just eat it. Just eat it. It tastes good. Trust me. Last but not least, we've got a roach species that is probably one of my favorites. This is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. And in the past, when I would try to give Jamal one of these protein patched gushers, he would just befriend them. That is my dog show. That is my dog. That's my dog show. This time, however, I'm hoping Jamal doesn't become besties with the roach. Because instead of using normal Madagascar hissing cockroaches, I'll be using black tiger hissing cockroaches. Now, these big black cockroaches evolved an ability to hiss at predators when startled in order to warn off whatever's attacking the roach. With that in mind, let's see how Jamal reacts to a black tiger Madagascar hissing cockroach. Alrighty, Jamal, here's a nice protein packed roach. I'm just gonna place it down right here. Don't become friends with it, please. Holy crap! Oh my gosh, the roach was literally screaming, bro. What the hell? That was freaking brutal. But on the bright side, I'm able to get a good shot of Jamal's goofy aw teeth. Look at his lips! <laughs> Well, technically, they're not teeth. They're pieces of bone that protrude out of Jamal's gums. But still, I think that's a pretty interesting shot of Jamal's fangs. Hello. Anyways, it's clear to see that Jamal loves that BBC. So we'll be giving big black cockroaches a solid suck out of 10. <laughs> this is Jamal Jackson, and he's the largest frog in the world. Bruh. Okay, he might not be the largest frog just yet, but that's because he's still a child. You see, Jamal Jackson, the African giant bullfrog, might already seem like a chunky boy. But in order for him to reach maximum thickness, I'm going to need to power feed my pixie frog. Now, in the last video I made with this frog, I fed Jamal a large variety of different roach species in order to figure out which types of roaches Jamal likes to eat the most. While we did succeed in figuring out which species of roach Jamal prefers to munch on, we also made a quite unsettling discovery. You see, while attempting to feed Jamal Madagascar hissing cockroaches, we found out bruh is a little racist. Yummy snack. Ugh, yeah. Bruh. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. How the hell could a frog be racist? But before you guys become close-minded to the idea, let me at least provide you guys with all of the evidence. Okay, for whatever reason, I found that my frog is only roaches to a certain family of cockroach that can only be found on the island of Madagascar. They're known as hissing cockroaches, and within my zoo of a room, I keep a grand total of three different hissing roach species. Normal Madagascar hissing cockroaches, black tiger hissing cockroaches, and the infamous Halloween hissing cockroaches. Now, the Halloween Halloween hissers are the smallest of the three and only get around two inches long. However, what these small little cocks lack in size, they more than make up for with their jaw-dropping Halloween-themed colors. To tell you the truth, I don't know how Jamal would react to a Halloween hisser, since I purposefully avoided introducing one of these adorable little roaches to Jamal in the last video. However, I need to get to the bottom of how racist Jamal 
Jamal Jackson actually is. And in order to do that, my frog must come face to face with the Halloween hisser. Daddy, chill. But before we do that, let's talk about black tiger hissy cockroaches. So, these big black cockroaches are scientifically known as Gromphodorhina grandadiri. They can reach a maximum length of just over three inches and strut a breathtaking shiny black exoskeleton. They're nicknamed black tiger hissing roaches since each little segment on the roach's abdomen breaks up the solid black coloration when the roach bends its body. Interestingly, the exoskeleton on these roaches acts as armor for the roach. And while all cockroaches might have an exoskeleton, nothing can compare to that of a hisser's exoskeleton. In fact, if I were to compare the texture of these big black cocks to any other animal in the world, I would compare it to a freaking crab. I, 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 I. Do you hear that? These cocks are seriously like knights in shiny black armor, and their powerful legs loaded with surprisingly sharp thorns make it that much harder for most predators to eat this roach. On top of all of that, this roach has the ability to hiss at its predators. <laughs> which can actually be pretty startling. Ah. However, pixie frogs are freaking gangsters. Da, 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 da. They don't care about how spiky, dangerous, or large a prey item is. As long as it looks tasty enough and can fit down the frog's gullet, they're gonna go for it, regardless of the consequences. Having said that, Jamal Jackson is the most G to the extreme frog I have ever encountered. Oh my god, Ronnie. You see, Jamal is aware of how powerful BBC is. He knows about the impenetrable armor. Bruh. The insanely sharp legs and the surprisingly loud hiss these roaches can make. Yet he is completely unbothered by all of it. Uh. Once Jamal lays his eyes on a BBC, nothing else matters. Except trying to get that big black cock down his throat as efficiently as possible. Excuse me. Anyways, it's fair to say Jamal is a connoisseur of BBC. And since he gobbled up that first glizzy so fast and efficiently, let's see what he does with the second black tiger hissing cockroach. Yes. Alrighty, Jamal. Here's a nice big and juicy one for you. Aw, don't get discouraged, buddy. I'm sure you'll get it with the next one. Bruh. Dude, just eat the roach. Okay, that was freaking glass. Stop trying to eat your reflection and eat the roach. Jenny the cockroach is over there drowning <laughs> while your last two brain cells are trying their hardest to process what the hell's going on. What do you have to say for yourself? Stupid. There's the initiative I was looking for. Go ahead and show the audience how much of an apex predator you are. Boy. Oh, oh, he's got it. Dude, how do you let that go? Literally, how do you let that go? And you still miss. And you miss again. Bro, what? Thank God you're my pet because you would not survive in the wild. Also, words can't even describe how bad I feel for Jenny. I'm dying. Let him cook now. Let him cook. I said let him Jamal, you straight devoured that big black cock. Yes, I did that, and that's a period. Anyways, I think my point has been proven. Clearly, Jamal is a connoisseur of big black cocks. But what about Halloween hissers? Will Jamal's roachism come out if I introduce a Halloween hisser? Uh, probably. Or will he gobble it up like he engulfed the last two roaches? Tasty. Okay, Jamal, please don't be racist towards the roach. Bring honor to our family. Oh, he did it. Oh, Bruh. Oh my gosh. You gotta be freaking kidding me, Jamal. How are you missing it, bro? It's right there. Bro's literally inhaling water at this point. How are you this dumb? Okay, I'm sorry, Jamal. You're not dumb. You're just unmotivated. Doesn't this succulent roach look appetizing? Yes. Okay, then, buddy. Go ahead and slurp up that cock. Don't let it swim away, bruh. I know you can do this. Stop the cow. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. Good freaking job, Jamal. You've made Dada so proud. Aww. Shut up, you lame. Anyways, I can now say with 100% certainty that Jamal Jackson is neither racist towards black tiger hissing cockroaches and Halloween hissing cockroaches. Which is huge, since no one wants a racist frog. 
However, there is still one species of cockroach that Jamal will not consume no matter what. Grandpa Dorhini portentosa, or the normal Madagascar hissing cockroach, was the first ever roach species I have ever kept as a pet. And for some reason, I cannot get this chunky boy to eat one of these scrum diddly dumptious roaches. I have tried everything. For instance, I have tried just feeding males. Ugh, yeah. I have tried just feeding females. I want to die. I've tried just placing the roach on its back in attempts of making it look more appetizing. I don't care! Bruh. I have even tried tongue feeding Jamal Jackson, what? and it still didn't work! Bruh. Like any dad, finding out my son is racist has taken a huge toll on my mental health. In fact, I've lost sleep for the last two and a half months ever since I found out what type of a frog Jamal Jackson really is. Nobody cares! And the fact that he continues to double down on his roachous ideologies makes me sick to my stomach. <laughs> Clearly, my patience has been spread way too thin, since I'm no longer willing to put up with such horrendous behaviors. I am better! I wish to one day live in a world absent of racism. More importantly, I wish to live in a world where all cockroaches, regardless of skin color, are free to become sustenance for my frog. Aww. I'm talking about a world free of roachism. And if I want this world to become a reality, I need to cure my frog's racism once and for all. This is blasphemy. Just accept me for who I am. Uh. Now, I've thought long and hard about how I could get Jamal to eat a normal Madagascar hissing cockroach. And while there's no possible way I can make that roach look more appetizing... Mmm, Jamal, yeah. look, a yummy snack. A little oh. oil. I think there's a way we can trick Jamal into eating one of these big brown cocks. Stop the cat. This is calcium powder. And for those who keep reptiles and amphibians at home, you're probably very familiar with this powdery white substance. But for everyone else watching, calcium powder is a dietary supplement that's commonly used by exotic pet keepers. Since most reptiles and amphibians don't get enough calcium in captivity, they're at risk of getting metabolic bone disease. In other words, dusting your pet's food with calcium powder from time to time will ensure that your pet doesn't develop any weak or deformed bones. Bruh. Anyways, the other day when I was giving Jamal a calcium dusted meal, it occurred to me. Bro cannot see what's under the white stuff. He just associates whatever's covered in calcium powder as food and goes in for the kill. <laughs> Thank you! So in theory, if I smother one of these juicy roaches in calcium powder and then introduce it to Jamal, he should eat the roach, regardless of his racist ideologies. Oh hell no, man. What Anyways, I think the best way we could go about this is if we first dust a black tiger hissing cockroach in calcium powder. That way, Jamal won't raise any suspicion. He'll just think I'm serving him a nice and juicy big black cockroach like I usually do. Then, once he's done gobbling down that BBC, I'll take the already prepared calcium dusted normal hissing cockroach and put it right in front of Jamal. And since he's such a hungry and growing boy that needs all the experience he can get in order to grow, he should just pounce on that big white cockroach and not think anything of it. Finally, once Jamal is done eating the disguised normal Madagascar hissing cockroach, it will be time to reveal the truth. As you can see, both cockroaches have already been prepared. On my left, we have the normal hissing cockroach, and on my right is the black tiger hissing cockroach. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Alrighty, Jamal, I got you a tasty BBC served just the way you like it. Uh... Go ahead and eat it, Jamal. Aren't you hungry? Yes. Bruh. Bruh. You can at least try to put in some effort, bro. What the hell is that? Okay, look, bro, the roach is right next to you. Now all you need to do is just eat it. Bumbocad! I swear to God, Jamal Jackson, no more messing around. Stop playing with your food, or else I'm gonna put you back into your enclosure. Oh hell nah, not the enclosure. My bad pimp. Ah, all of a sudden, you wanna start eating your food. Interesting. Bruh. Hey, but on the bright side, at least my boy's finally putting in some hustle. Yes. <laughs> Huh? <laughs>
Tasty. Aw, you're such a cutie patootie when you're being a good boy. And guess what? I have another black tiger hissing cockroach for you. Really? Yes, I got it right here. But before I give you this cockroach, I want to apologize to you, Jamal. Huh? I'm so, so, so sorry for continuously forcing normal hissing cockroaches on you. I need to understand that you are who you are. And instead of trying to change you, I need to accept you for who you are. So in all sincerity, I'm so sorry for trying to change you into something you're not. I love you, Jamal, and I will always love you, regardless of the type of cock you prefer. Aww. Now, how does a juicy BBC sound? Bussin. <laughs> I'm dying. There it is, Jamal. I know you want it. Yes. Okay, give it another try, Jamal. You got this. Okay, you're gonna need to try harder than that, bro. Come on, dude. You can do this. I believe in you. Nice. Here, let me put My it down leg. again so you can redeem yourself, Jamal. Okay, now you don't want your freaking peace offering to get away from you, bro. What are you doing? Put in some freaking hustle, okay? I'm over this, dude. Just eat the roach. Look at it. It's right there, bro. Nice shot. Bruh. Oh my gosh. Get some help. Okay, this is your last goddamn chance, Jamal. If you don't eat it now, then you're never gonna- Oh my gosh, no way, no freaking way. Good freaking job, Jamal. Let's freaking go. He actually ate a normal hissing cockroach. I'm huh? so proud of you, boy. Wait, no, uh, yeah. no. Disgusting. Why did I say that? God damn it. You freaking idiot, Jamal. Oh my gosh. Look, Jamal, I know I was in the wrong for trying to trick you, but please, just give it a try. It's not any worse than a big black cock. No, I have trust issues now. Bruh. Look, Jamal, no more silent treatment. It's been three entire days. You can't keep ignoring me forever, bro. I've already said I'm sorry, so just talk to me. This freaking guy. One week later. So I know you want nothing to do with me, Jamal, but I need you to understand why I did what I did. You see, I want nothing but the best for you, Jamal. And with cancel culture being at an all-time high, it's only a matter of time before word gets out that you're racist. And once that happens, you'll be canceled. <laughs> What? Are you serious? Yes, and once you get cancelled, you won't be able to show your face on the internet or get a girlfriend, and all of your friends, family, and supporters will turn their back on you. But worst of all, you'll only be known as the racist frog. Oh god, how can I fix this? How do I stop this nightmare from happening? Wait, what? You really want to fix this? Yes. I'll do anything. Well, if you say so, the only way you can stop this from happening is by proving to the public that you're actually not roaches. And in order to do that, you're gonna need to eat a normal Madagascar hissing cockroach. Bruh. Okay, screw it. Bring that Cock. here, boy. And make it the biggest one you can find. Okay, Jamal, the roach is right there. It's time for you to prove yourself, okay? Don't- oh, oh my gosh, no freaking way, Jamal. No freaking way. He actually did it, guys. And if I'm being honest, I didn't think he was really gonna do it. So much blood, sweat, tears, and sleepless nights have gone into trying to cure Jamal's roachism. And at the end of the day, all it took was threatening Jamal with cancel culture? You've gotta be freaking kidding me. You know what, though? Who even cares? All that really matters is Jamal Jackson, the African giant bullfrog, is no longer racist. And if that isn't a W, I don't know what is. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It helps out with the algorithm and allows me to continue making content for all you beautiful people out there. Now, if you want to see some more Jamal Jackson content or any other exotic animal content, don't be shy and give this channel a subscribe. Also, thank you guys so much for 800k subscribers. You guys are literally making my dreams come true. And for that, I am forever grateful. Which is why I'll be responding to every single comment on this video. With that being said, Thank you all so much for watching And Jamal, thank you for finally overcoming mm. your racism You are now a certified glizzy gladiator Welcome to the team Nice go, 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 go. On my hand is a black tiger hissing cockroach A species of roach that is so irresistible That even other big black cockroaches Can't resist the urge to nibble on their own kind Tasty Anyways, Jamal Jackson is on a losing streak And he's pretty bummed out about how horrible he is At eating normal Madagascar hissing cockroaches Fuck. So let's turn his frown upside down by giving him a scrum diddly dumptious BBC. Okay, Jamal goes for it. Damn it. Come here, mom! My leg! Bruh. You're just.
is absolutely trash at eating cockroaches, dude. You're literally swallowing air. What are you doing? So Jamal missed again and again and again. But finally, after what seemed like forever, Jamal was able to get a good grip around the BBC. Hooray! Now the roach tried to use intimidation yes. tactics by hissing up a storm. However, Jamal was completely unbothered by the roach's defensive tactics. Which makes sense, since Jamal Jackson is the definition of thug life. In this container is a variety of different cockroaches. And even though I want all of these yummy cocks for myself, they're actually food for the pimp himself. So let's give Jamal Jackson his breakfast. Holy crap, did you guys see that? Bro literally deep-throated two doobie roaches at once. Excellent technique, Jamal. Excellent. <laughs> Suddenly, Chris the cockroach makes a run for it. But Jamal is alerted. However, as Jamal goes for Chris, he realizes there was a BBC hiding underneath him the entire time. Stupid. This huh? sends Jamal into a spiral of confusion, allowing both hissers to escape. Fast as fuck, boy. Bruh. Jesus! Jamal straight pounces on Wendy the Dubia Roach, making the Dubia Roach faction the first to be eliminated from this cockroach deathmatch. Hi, how are ya? Out of the corner of his eye, Jamal spots one of the most delicious roaches within the entire arena. And even though bro is still trying to digest the entire Doobie Roach faction, he would be a fool to let a meal of this caliber get away. With his eyes on the prize, Jamal puts that tongue to work. Bruh. Okay, surely he'll get it this time. Oh my gosh, bro, just eat the roach! The roach begins taking shelter in the substrate, and unfortunately, Jamal was too stupid. And was outsmarted by the Ivory Cockroach. Oh. While this is a huge hey. win for the Ivory Kingdom, Jamal Jackson's ego has been severely damaged. Not only did Bro get humiliated, he was also caught slipping in 4K. Oh. Which makes things personal. With that in mind, I wouldn't be surprised if Bro tries to settle the score later on in the deathmatch. Especially since Guadalupe has just become number one on Jamal's op list. <laughs> Suddenly, I saw something mind-blowing. Justine from the Hissing Roach faction was rolling around in Jamal Jackson's doo-doo. At first, I thought the roach had a fetish with toilet treasure, but she was actually carrying out a 3000 IQ play. Hello, studious. Justine was purposefully trying to smell like the frog species in hopes of making herself seem less appetizing. I mean, think about it. No animal is gonna want to eat something that's smothered in literal doo-doo. With pure confidence, Justine walks past Jamal Jackson, and just as she plans, and Jamal loses interest after getting a whiff of his own boom boom biscuit. Oh my god, it smells like shit. Or so I thought. Jamal goes after Justine in a fit of rage. He begins crunching away with the look of pure vengeance in his eyes. Jesus Christ. Jamal knew his ego couldn't survive if he was outsmarted by a roach a second time. Thus, Justine didn't taste like a scat sandwich. Oh no, no, no. Justine tasted like pure victory. <laughs> Tasty. Go, 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 go. This is Jamal Jackson, my African giant pixie frog, and his stomach is literally like a black hole, which makes him constantly hungry. Bruh. Run me that finger. Now, obviously, being in a hangry mood 24-7 can be very stressful, so let's help bro de-stress by giving him a relaxing spa day. Our spa oh. begins with a soothing waterfall rinse. Not only washing away the coconut fiber and the roach remains stuck to Jamal's skin, we're also washing away his sins. I can already see the stress just sliding off his body. I would say he's enjoying himself. Now we're gonna let Jamal soak in his bath water for 20 minutes so he can absorb our specialized blend. This is gonna preserve
preserve Jamal's skin, giving him that young and youthful glow. <laughs> now let's scrub off Jamal's old skin. Okay, it turns out Jamal doesn't like the brushing method too much. I think it's time to give Jamal a BBC complimentary of the West Side Reptiles Therapy Spa. Holy smokes! Jamal shoved the big black cock down his gullet, and like a true glizzy magician, he made the roach disappear in record time. And in order to truly relax our clients, we provide the most gourmet glizzies in all the lands. So let's feed Jamal. Don't be shy now, Jamal. I know you can do it. He's literally cornered. Come on, buddy. Oh my gosh. Oh no, bro. You gotta be kidding me. I really thought you had it, bro. Jesus Christ. Bro is literally scarfing down that glizzy. <laughs> Isn't he so cute? Anyways, Jamal was given one more roach. <laughs> Finally, Jamal was in a completely relaxed state, which allowed me to brush away all of his dead skin. With the homie freshly pampered and feeling as relaxed as ever, it was time to end the day with a rejuvenating massage. Making sure not to miss a single spot, I massaged every square inch of Jamal Jackson. I gave every single nook and cranny a soothing deep tissue massage. I even rubbed down bro's no-no square. He enjoyed that part a lot. And I did too. Anyways, Jamal felt like a brand new frog. And while the day was coming to an end, it was finally time for Jamal Jackson to return back to his enclosure. The last time Guadalupe was in Jamal's presence, he humiliated Jamal in 4K. Stupid. And ever since that day, Jamal has had sleepless nights fantasizing about how he's gonna get his revenge. Anyways, today's Jamal's lucky day as I finally found Guadalupe hiding out underneath my pillow. However, since I want to make Jamal really happy, I made it my mission to capture Guadalupe's mom and dad. Making this vengeance arc so much sweeter. So without further ado, let's introduce Guadalupe's mother to Jamal. Holy cow, Jamal engulfs Martha like a true apex predator. Now, even though Martha is literally inside of Jamal, her antenna are still moving, which means Shardy was swallowed whole. Suddenly, Jamal locked eyes with Fred, and I was about to witness the brawl of a lifetime. Oh my gosh, never mind. Jamal slurped Fred in with his sticky tongue before chomping down on Fred like a dog with a chew toy. You can just see the years of abuse on Jamal's face as he bites down on Fred's exoskeleton. Jesus Christ. A few bucks. The last time Guadalupe was in Jamal's presence, he humiliated Jamal in 4K. Stupid. And ever since that day, Jamal has had sleepless nights fantasizing about how he's gonna get his revenge. Anyways, today's Jamal's lucky day as I finally found Guadalupe hiding out underneath my pillow. But first, I wanted to give Guadalupe one last chance to even out the slate by apologizing before irreversible damage was done. So I looked Guadalupe in his eyes and I asked him if he could just simply apologize to Jamal for making him look like a dummy. And you know what he said? Screw you and Jamal Jackson. It's not my fault, bro has an IQ equivalent to a potato. Matter of fact, put me in with bro. Oh, hell no! Alrighty, Jamal, inside of my hand is Guadalupe. Hooray! Now, bro's been extremely disrespectful, so please show this mofo a lesson. Come on, Jamal, you got this. It's your time to shine. Oh, that was close. Hey, yo, don't let him get away, though. Yo, come on, bro, don't let him get away. No! Damn it. I'm so stupid. I just accomplished one of my childhood dreams by hitting an absolutely insane YouTube milestone. But before I show you guys what I got in this box, I need Jamal Jackson to also accomplish one of his childhood dreams. Yes. You see, I need Jamal Jackson to destroy his arch nemesis Guadalupe once and for all. Now, after Jamal was outsmarted by Guadalupe for the second time, oh, hell no. He was at the verge of ending it all. In fact, right after the incident occurred, I caught Jamal standing on the ledge of my table with the look of madness and self-destruction in his eyes. He was about to jump. Oh, so I grabbed my BBC out of my pants within the blink of an eye and I used it to lure Jamal away from the edge. And once he was far enough, I grabbed the depressed frog, stuck him in his enclosure, right. gave him a mouth-watering BBC. <laughs> Tasty. And a delectable candy corn cockroach. <laughs> Hooray! After the glizzy guzzler devoured his cocks, I knew something needed to be done. Guadalupe needed to be sacrificed. Three days later, and the bozo was finally caught. And like any good cop, I began bullying the roach in hopes of getting a reaction that would allow me to use deadly force. Going straight for the jugular, I brought up Guadalupe's deceased parents. You know, Martha and Fred, the two ivory cockroaches Jamal devoured last week. Bruh. So, how does it feel, Guadalupe? How does what feel? Being captured? No, not having any parents, you loser! Ha! Got him! Hey, yo, what the f- Bro, you and Jamal swear you did something. They might have been my biological parents or whatever, but they did not raise me. I was adopted dummy. God damn it, are you serious? Yes, bozo. Oh, fuck. 
Anyways, Guadalupe was finally captured, and even though I couldn't use deadly force, I knew someone that could. However, Jamal Jackson won't be able to survive another L. So I got on my iPad and I diligently rewatched both death matches between Guadalupe and Jamal Jackson. And it finally hit me! The reason Guadalupe's been so dominant over Jamal in the deathmatch setting has to do with the substrate. You see, ivory cockroaches originate from South America, and since the nymphs are so big, round, and juicy, they're preyed upon by pretty much everything that comes into contact with them. As a result, these protein-packed glizzy gushers have evolved the ability to spend most of their time underneath the ground. Additionally, their subterrestrial lifestyle keeps them out of harm's way from most predators. It's also the reason why Guadalupe's been violating Jamal Jackson on a regular basis. I mean, look! Bro's simply burrowing into the substrate and that's it! So, theoretically, if I use a container without substrate for the next tournament, it would be an even Stevens type of battle. So I prepared the arena and got Jamal ready for his big day. I showered, pampered, and massaged thy sturdy froggo before finally placing Jamal into the Coliseum. We proceeded to run a few practice runs before the main event. <laughs> Before long, Jamal finally looked me in the eyes and said, Bring me the cock. So that's exactly what I did. I pulled Guadalupe out of his holding cell and gave him a farewell kiss goodbye. Since I very well knew that this was the end of Guadalupe, I took one last look at Jamal and his face was stone cold. The look in his eyes reassured me how badly he wanted his vengeance. Finally, I dropped Guadalupe in on his back and flipping Jamal Jackson low-key forgot where he was. Huh? But that's okay, because Jamal finally snapped out of it before guzzling Guadalupe whole. Vengeance was finally served, and with hard work and dedication, Jamal finally accomplished his dreams. This monumental achievement left Jamal utterly speechless, and while he dwelled in his victory, I surprised the glizzy guzzling goat with his very own crown. Bruh. Anyways, it's finally time to see what's inside the box. Holy freaking crap, guys, we actually did it. With the help of all you fabulous people out there, the West Side Reptiles YouTube channel hit a mind-boggling 1 million subscribers. Never once in a million, scratch that, a billion years would I have ever imagined reaching such a mind-blowing milestone. Ever since I was a little kid, I would only ever fantasize about being a YouTuber. And back when I first started posting to social media, I was only looking for a place to share my love for nature. Never once did I think I could get this far, but we did it guys because of your love and support I now owe you guys my life huh? Nah, but for real guys, I am forever grateful for every single one of my followers across all platforms And let this sexy play button represent that anything is possible All you gotta do is stay consistent and believe in yourself. Peace! Now ever since Jamal put an end to Guadalupe, life has been pretty freaking good Jamal Jackson has been consistently getting a good night's rest and his mental health has really improved However, I just discovered something that completely jeopardizes this juicy froggo's existence It has to do with Jamal's cock and not that type a cock, you freaking weirdo. The type you guzzle. You see, Jamal Jackson loves cockroaches. Matter of fact, I would go as far as saying Jamal lives for the cocks. I mean, just take a look at the delight in his eyes as he guzzles that glizzy. Clearly, Jamal feels most alive while slurping down a big, juicy cock. So it's no surprise that Jamal has a soft spot in his heart for BBC. But just yesterday, I was fetching Jamal his scrum diddly dumptious lunch when I discovered something horrendous. Jamal Jackson's BBC reserves had been tampered with. There was a huge gaping hole that was allowing my precious roaches to escape. So I opened up the enclosure in order to see how many roaches got loose in my room. But upon opening up the lid, things only seemed to get worse as the breach in security had allowed this colony to become infested with forward flies. Clearly, sabotage was at play. But before I could find out who did this, I needed to act fast as the extinction of this roach colony will eventually lead to the eradication of Jamal Jackson himself. Fuck. Wasting no time at all, I began evacuating my entire hissing roach colony into this sterile bin. It was honestly shocking to see this many maggots in my beloved cock enclosure. And while I might have been fortunate enough to discover this problem early on, nothing could have prepared me for this. Ladarius III had fallen! My most successful breeder male, Ladarius III, will never impregnate another female ever again. And that pisses me off. So I rushed over to Jamal Jackson in order to see if he has any leads on who did this reckoning. 
I had vengeance on my mind, and I was huh? dumbfounded to find out Detective Johnson actually cracked the case. He ran me down on all of his findings before revealing who the sickle was. It was Guadalupe's adoptive parents oh, in an attempt of getting no. revenge for their son's tournament-style oh. execution. <laughs> Tabitha and her husband Ethan tried starving Jamal by collapsing his primary food source. Jamal has now officially been a victim of a hate crime. What? Ever. And I'll be damned to let that slide. Only five minutes later, and my best bounty hunters were on a mission to find the demonic duo. Hooray! While I finished up sanitizing, stripping, and redoing the roach's enclosure. Before long, I was finally done, and not a single maggot was left behind. It was finally time to reintroduce my beloved Glizzies. It honestly felt surreal being this up close and personal with BBC of this magnitude. Hey, yo, what the freak is that? What are you doing here, bro? You're in the wrong colony. Jesus Christ, I'll be dealing with you. You later. But like I was saying, my colony is doing better than ever. And while there were some casualties from this forward fly infestation, my big black cock empire is bigger than it's ever been before. After scooping up the last few roaches, I basked in the glory of my work. The cocks were safe, and that meant Jamal was safe. It was an overall W, but I would be a fool to forget that we are at war. I wanna kill my ops. I've honestly been dreading having to make this video, but approximately three days ago, my beloved Jamal Jackson went missing. I I had just returned from a night out on the town. When this eerie feeling ran up my spine, I could sense something was horribly wrong. And seeing as Jamal's ops were still out causing chaos, I searched around expecting to find Tabitha and Ethan. But nothing could have prepared me for what had actually happened. The lid to Jamal's enclosure had been tampered with. And upon opening up the lid, Jamal was gone. Clearly, the ops spun back and kidnapped my precious Frago in retaliation for what Jamal did to their son Guadalupe. It all happened so fast. One moment he was here and the next he was gone. Searching endlessly, I scanned every nook and cranny within a five mile radius in order to find my cherished Frago. However, all of my efforts were unsuccessful. And it pains me to say this, but it's time you guys all know the truth. Jamal Jackson is gone forever. Hey yo, what the f Dude, where were you? Don't worry about that. Oh no, did the ops hurt you? You fool. They've been captured. Jamal Jackson had finally returned. And after telling me all about his three day long expedition, he said there was a surprise for me inside of his brand new backpack. Aww. Trying my best not to laugh at Jamal's rainbow themed drip, I began unzipping his backpack. And in an extraordinary turn of events, Jamal's ops were inside of the bag. I honestly couldn't make sense of the situation. But somehow, someway, this legendary frog was able to hunt down and capture Tabitha and Ethan. It was a massive W for Jamal. Jamal, but he didn't travel all this way just to stick Guadalupe's evil parents in jail. Oh no no no. You see, Jamal Jackson's vengeance arc is barely getting started. With that being said, I readied up the battle arena. I then bathed thy stinky Frago, since he was mad dirty from his vengeance seeking voyage. The sacred water rinsed over Jamal's Jamie, body, washing Jamie. away all of his previous okay, sins. Okay. Eventually, Jamal Jackson returned back to his purest form, and it was time for my pixie frog to practice for his big day. With the help of his food stocked refrigerator, I dropped in Dubia Roach after Dubia Roach. And like a true MVP, Jamal gobbled up every single cock with ease. He was in his truest form. And after the glizzy guzzling goat finished up his last roach, he was ready to put an end to the demonic duo. Now, as you've probably noticed, the arena is different this time around. You see, a lot of you dark side supporters deemed Guadalupe's execution as unfair. So in order to even out the playing field, there is now a net in the far left corner of the enclosure that the roaches can use in order to escape their demise. As a result, the faith of Tabitha and Ethan is now in the hands of the old gods and the new. If Tabitha and Ethan can make it to the net and escape this arena, the Westside Reptiles Court of Law will respect the god's decision and will not charge these roaches with crimes against humanity. However, if the roaches fail to escape and Jamal gets his mouth around these dirty little cocks, then the gods have spoken and justice is served. Anyways, I scuffle through Jamal's book bag and I unearth Ethan the evil. But before I drop Ethan in, I allow him to regain his senses, as what's right is right. Holy crap! Jamal went straight in for the cheap shot, even though there's clearly a wall of plastic. Bruh. I don't know what that sicko did to Jamal Jackson on that expedition, but whatever it is, has Jamal furious. Anyways, Judgment Day is finally here, Hooray. and it would be cruel to make Jamal wait any longer. So I drop Ethan in, and holy smoke, Sir Jackson 
attacks and nearly takes a chunk out of the evil one. He continues chasing after the roach, but the net appears to be working towards Ethan's advantage. In fact, the roach is in the perfect position to escape Jamal's fury. However, Ethan is overran with ego. As a result, this evil cock puts trash talking Jamal over safety and success. La la la, try to get me now, fatso. I guess the gods have spoken. And while Jamal might not like their decision, I am a man of my word. With that being said, Ethan the evil has been proven not guilty. Never mind. Jamal Jackson silenced Ethan by literally biting his face off. Nice shot. Revenge has never tasted sweeter, as every single munch and crunch squeezed justice laced liquids out of Ethan's exoskeleton. <laughs> And before long, the vile beast was completely devoured. However, we must not celebrate just yet, as the true mastermind behind the attack on Jamal's BBC reserves is still without entering the arena. So I rush over to the backpack in order to extract Tabitha the Treacherous. I drop her into the arena, but Jamal was way too focused on his froggy reflection. Bruh. Eventually, he snaps out of it and begins to slowly stalk his prey. Tabitha is captured, and it's only a matter of time before she is devoured. Stupid! Jamal ended up squeezing Tabitha out of his own mouth. She attempts to swim away from the beast, but no worry, surely he'll get it this time. Oh my gosh, dude! You're supposed to be thirsty for a cock, not thirsty for water! Bruh. What the fuck? Yeah. Finally, Jamal has chomped on Tabitha the Treacherous, and with his goofy looking chompers, he squeezed the living fecal matter out of Guadalupe's mother. Jamal was in a glizzy gulping daze, and the only oh. thing that mattered was getting that dirty little cock down his throat. One guzzle later, and the demonic duo was gone forever. Guadalupe's entire family huh? heritage has been abolished, and the only thing that remains of Guadalupe's family name is this dookie strand that Jamal flicked off Tabitha before he swallowed her whole. Anyways, Jamal Jackson successfully wiped out an entire family lineage of ops. With that in mind, I allowed my prized disciple to fully absorb his monumental achievement. He sat and savored his hard-earned victory, and after some time had passed, he realized only one thing can make this moment better. So he hunkered down and pinched one off. Such a legend. When I first came across one of these horny bastards, I thought bro was excited to see me. But it turns out, I'm not that special, as every single one of these caterpillars had a freaking horn. Anyways, Jamal Jackson has never tried one of these delicious delicacies, so I think it's only fair to give Jamal his fair share of yummy gummy worms. Now, Jamal has never seen a hornworm in the entirety of his life, so the first time he was confronted by one, he had no idea what to do. So I decided to add a couple more in order to generate a feeding frenzy but to my surprise bro just let the worms crawl on his freaking head i honestly couldn't believe it my beloved jamal jackson had finally made himself some new friends it was quite the unusual sight to see as a wild pixie frog would never even hesitate to deep throat one of these delicious worms but against all odds jamal befriended these majestic creatures and i think we can all agree that jamal does indeed have a heart after all oh my gosh never mind you're a freaking sicko jamal why would you do dylan like that. I thought he was your f Whoa! Like a true legend, Jamal yeets the two worms off his head before slurping up William the third. He gobbles up William to completion. <laughs> And then he proceeds to go absolutely bonkers on the rest of the caterpillars. It was the feeding frenzy that I had originally expected, but having the image of Jamal and his friend burned into my head, the hornworm genocide taking place right in front of my eyes was nothing like I had previously imagined. He slurped, chomped, and gulped worm after worm over and over again. Making short work of these moth larvae, it was clear that these blue gummy worms were Jamal's new favorite food. I mean, seriously, the only time I've ever seen Jamal this joyous eating his food is while he's murky enough it honestly didn't make sense why jamal loved these worms so goddamn much but then it hit me bro is an amphibian and amphibians love water additionally hornworms are made up of 85 percent water this makes hornworms one of the most refreshing feeders jamal has ever had the pleasure of wrapping his mouth around it's no surprise that jamal jackson has riz but i'm flipping flabbergasted that bro went behind my back in order to trade his feet pics for silkworms yes you heard me right jamal used his succulent toe 
those two risk up Gold Coast roaches. What the freak? Anyways, I refuse to let these worms go to waste. And even though I shouldn't condemn Jamal's bombastic behavior, a couple of silkworms have already started to make their cocoons. So in a race against time, I pulled out every single silkworm. They wiggled and jiggled their soft, velvety bodies while simultaneously producing silk from their precious bottoms. I was honestly blown away by how much silk these worms were able to produce. And even though my fascination for these worms grew to the point where I wanted to keep them as a pet, they were Jamal's property, and the beast <laughs> needed to eat. <laughs> Holy smokes! Oh, the throat goat has just displayed his skills once again. With only four silkworms to go, there's no telling what Jamal will do next. Holy! What the freak? Holy! What the freak? Why are you eating dirt, bro? Oh my gosh, dude. Can somebody please explain why the homie is French kissing substrate? Only Jamal can go from guzzling goat to crackhead within the snap of a finger. Anyways, Jamal Jackson tongue punched the dirt one last time before this happened. It was the greatest thing I had ever seen. A frog with just one tongue and a dream was able to devour four glizzies at once. Mm. Jamal Jackson, the glizzy guzzling extraordinaire, achieved the impossible. And such an accomplishment cannot go unrewarded. So I grabbed my mysterious ball of silk that I had placed aside moments earlier. I pulled off the excess silk and then I tried cracking it open. But to my surprise, the cocoon-like structure was built different. So I used some scissors to make a small laceration. Yeah, yeah. I then pried and pulled with all my might until I unearthed this marvelous creature. Okay, if I'm being honest, I was expecting something much cooler. But I guess this extra thick worm will suffice. According to indigenous folklore, African giant pixie frogs are true apex predators of the swamp. It's been said that these G to the extreme amphibians have the ability to take down insect and vertebrate prey. However, can the derp himself, Jamal Jackson live up to his wild ancestors? Well, to find out, I bought Jamal Jackson his very own pool in order to simulate his natural habitat. Now, for educational purposes, I will be releasing seven fishies in with Jamal Jackson so that we can see once and for all what his reaction will be. But first, let's allow Jamal Jackson to enjoy his pool day. But there was still a massive problem. Even though Jamal Jackson was trying his best to capture these delectable glizzies, he was literal dog water at fishing. I mean, for God's sake, it doesn't even look like he's trying in some of these clips. Eventually, Jamal decided to slide on the ops. And with the mofo cornered, it was Sir Jackson's time to shine. Hello, bozo. <laughs> you stupid. I want to die. The fishy made its escape, and to make matters worse, the brutal beast was taunting Jamal's horrendous aim. Suck my <laughs> Jamal. I felt oh so bad for poor little Jamal. 